And these, these guys actually hired me. These guys in Chicago hired me to do a jazz band painting. And they sent me a picture of this, this, these guys playing instruments. And it was perfect. It was really high definition detail. And I said, uh, guys, I, I can't paint this exactly like this. You know, I'll just do it in my own style. And I could hear them go, <coughs> please, yeah, do that. Yeah, that's what we want. We want what you do best. And I'm going, okay. You know, so I just did the sloppy big painting, sent it back to them. They said, how do you like this? Oh, this is perfect. Yeah, this is great. And I said, guys, what are you doing with this stuff? And they go, well, we make cataract replacement lenses. So you are the before. <laughs> and this, this, you, you, you're the before, all that focus, and the one that's crisp is after, after our efforts to improve your eyesight. And I started laughing. They said, boy, I, this is pretty funny. They said, well, we, we don't, we're, we're glad you find it funny. This one started uh, just being in this area a lot and watching the um, what, watching the light. It's a real soft, soft light. I mean, it's, it's, it's coming in from here. So you see it stretching across this building from this kind of yellow into a dark, dark kind of muddy green. So it's stretchy. You have your natural light and then you have this hideous artificial light kind of coming down from all the signs. This is the one area where they're actually required to build hideous signs. It's part of the law. If you build a building in Times Square, you got to put a sign up, a marquee. So that's why you see these 60-foot lurid purple and green, and you have an Eminem's character that's 120 feet tall, like dancing around. And, um, scam artists, grifters, con men. Um, like you get the businessman on the phone, he's always on the phone or talking the Bluetooth and just walking along and chattering to no one, seeing where they go and waiting for the right shadows to hit. The sun can pop out and you have a 60 foot shadow and that's the moment you wait for and you can sketch and get the buildings and figure out how the depth of perspective of things. And then that light will hit, the sun will break through and it just carves the whole thing out of light, and it's, it's a trick from the Bay Area Expressionists, David Park and Elmer Bischoff and those guys, where you just carve a shoulder with light. It's mainly backlit, but you can get these, it almost looks structural. The most important thing in this type of painting is to put your hand in ice. You know, you make a stroke, okay, just leave it. It's either right or it isn't right. You know, you, you don't fiddle with it. I mean, you're not gonna, fiddling with it isn't going to help it. It's just going to slow it down and make your eye slow it. If you do the back of a cab or some guy's shoulder, just do it. Do it and leave it. And you have the movement of the stroke. If you're doing a, a, a tire on a car, you don't go across like this. You go around the tire with the stroke. And all these little things create movement. You have to get over the preciousness of paint and canvas. It's just paint and canvas. If you screw it up, throw it away, do another one. It's, I imagine a writer or a filmmaker would do the same thing. It's just a piece of film. It's just a piece of paper. Get over the uh, preciousness of the canvas and just attack it. Try to get a mood into it. The bike's moving fast. Do you want to like render it every detail? You're not going to see every detail. Miss the valve cap, the, the way the threads go, the tire treads, the spokes. Just slam it in there. If it doesn't work, uh, what's the loss? An hour, a couple hours. Wipe it out, do it again. And you try to get that energy and movement into it. You do it by composition, by like angles working in, and perspectives and things also. You know, so there's a strength and a movement to diagonals and triangles. So you work those a lot. Okay, buildings will come in at you. Uh, streets will widen up. You see little patches of uh, islands of safety, little white areas you can run to under all the stress of buildings and people and carts and cabs. And New York is a great theme for that because there is so much going on. You can kind of lends itself to a rapid way of capturing it. But it, it, it's not a slapdash way because you do need to know what you're drawing. And that's where all the sketches come in. Learn it in the sketches 
so that you know it by observation and sketch. And then when you paint it, you're not aware of every step of the way. It, it, it's hard to put your finger on why it's New York, and I think it's because it's, it's an international city. Everyone seems to gravitate to New York, whether you're from Ohio, whether you're from you know, Sierra Leone or Europe. Or, you're, it, this just seems like a destination. It seems like an international destination. And you've got all these people crammed in this place, and for some reason it works. I mean, it should be total chaos, but it, it's somehow, there's some glue that holds it all together. It feels like everyone has come here to kind of better themselves and they're all trying to achieve something and trying to work their way up or survive or get through and there's there seems to be a, a weird camaraderie I mean, it's a strange feeling of togetherness.